It's been over a month since Kazuya's debut as a playable character in Smash Ultimate, and we think it's time to ask the question. Is he high tier or top tier? How's it going, Smashers? My name is Bonk, and in this video, we'll be answering that very question. Come with us as we take a look at Kazuya's strengths, weaknesses, and everything in between so that we can figure out whether he's high tier or top tier. If you want to level up your gameplay to the top tier, there's no better place than ProGuides.com where you can have access to 24-7 live coaching, courses taught by pros, and loads of other content. Don't forget to check us out over on the website after the video. First, let's take a look at his neutral. Unlike many characters in Smash Ultimate, Kazuya takes a very grounded approach to playing the neutral. While his aerials are actually quite good in a vacuum, his short jump height, slow double jump, and extremely jarring 7-frame jump squat – never thought I'd see one of those again – all make them a bit less applicable in the neutral. Because of this, it may seem like his anti-airing capabilities are a bit lackluster at first glance. And that's because they kinda are but they're not lacking enough to the point of being a genuine shortcoming, and his grounded anti-airs are quite formidable in the right hands. The most notable of which being his twin pistons. This move may appear to be your standard fighting game character up tilt, but it has two particular traits that make it an exceptional grounded anti-air. For one, Kazuya's arm and upper body are fully invulnerable during the attack, beginning as early as frame 4. This makes it practically impossible to beat Twin Pistons with a landing aerial, as you'd have to somehow hit his legs as you land on top of him, while still avoiding the extremely generous hitbox. If the first hit was the entire move, the clear counterplay would just be double jumping to land a bit later. But not only is the first hit practically lagless, the follow-up attack is similarly generous in size, while also being upper body and vulnerable. This gives Kazuya a substantial response to timing mix-ups and creates an overall strong option to incentivize grounded play. This is where the devil really starts to come out, and it's nearly all thanks to a single move. Electric Wind Godfist. Imagine a move that is completely unreactable, safe on shield, combos into nearly anything you can think of on hit at any percent, Slap on some invulnerability, and you have what might be one of the best moves in the entire game. Oh, and did we mention you can do it out of a crouch dash as well? This means that you can retain its unreactability while using it as a burst option from as far as about three character lengths away. This move does everything for Kazuya, and while it may not always be the best option, it's almost never the worst either, and you risk little to nothing for just throwing it out. Where Kazuya really begins to shine is in the advantage, most notably due to his highly explosive combo game. Practically all of his moves, from the guaranteed to trip stature smash to the weak meteor smash on his neutral air and his various low knockback yet seemingly highly frame advantaged normals, can combo into each other in various ways. His combo tree is incredibly extensive, and this may be due to the fact that his various smaller combos tend to set up into a handful of similar positions, effectively allowing you to stick the smaller combos together like a set of Legos. It's not uncommon for Kazuya to deal upwards of 70, 80, even 90% off of a single neutral win, and Kazuya players are only getting better at executing these combos by the day. Those are some pretty solid strengths, but what about some things Kazuya doesn't do so well? Well, despite how good his attacks may be, he's particularly slow, both in the air and on the ground. This, in conjunction with the poor startup on most of his normals and in addition to his lack of quick out of shield options, makes him quite easily overwhelmed by mobile characters that can pressure him with quick, up-close boxing options. His burst range is notably short as well, and many characters can safely engage Kazuya by spacing themselves just outside of his crouch dash range. His poor mobility also makes him prone to circle camping, and if someone were determined enough, they could establish a small lead and run with it for the entire game. His lack of mobility and strong burst options can make escaping from the corner a struggle as well, and his disadvantage overall is similarly rough. 
His landing options are very limited, with no attacks that can reliably and safely cover the area directly below him, and a very limited ability to drift due to his poor aerial mobility. His recovery is especially exploitable, and while it may travel very far, any character with sufficient vertical mobility to simultaneously threaten both high and low recoveries can easily chase him and punish his up special. His double jump being as slow as it is doesn't help much either, and while his Devil Fist is an option, it's not exactly the most reliable and locks you out of using your up special as well, leaving you with little in the way of positional mix-ups. Now that we've laid out Kazuya's strengths and weaknesses, it's time to assess how well they compensate for each other, and furthermore, how that impacts his placement on the tier list. Characters in Smash Ultimate are incredibly fast, and with the exception of some low and bottom tiers, we believe most characters are suitably equipped to exploit his poor mobility, frame data, and burst range to exert pressure that Kazuya isn't entirely capable of dealing with. Most of these characters are perfectly capable of exploiting his recovery as well, most likely due in part to the universally high jump acceleration across Smash Ultimate's cast. Kazuya is extremely potent once he finds that opening, and his ability to reliably touch of death opponents, as well as the pressure he can exert once the opponent enters his unreactable range, allow him to remain a genuinely threatening character. And the way he plays is honestly kinda like a more extreme Terry, once you peel back the layer of Tekken paint. With all of that in mind, we think Kazuya is a high tier. It should go without saying that this is largely speculation. Kazuya is still relatively new, and with Offline just beginning to come back in full force, we're certain that there's still a lot of growth to be seen in the Kazuya metagame. Whether it's Riddles tearing it up at the comeback, or Axiom Excel making waves at Push the Limit 12, prospects are high for the character, and we can't wait to see what the future holds. Well, that's it for this video. Thanks for watching, Smashers! Do you agree with our placement? Let us know in the comments below! And while you're down there, don't forget to like and subscribe, and go ahead and click that bell so you can be notified when we upload new videos. That's all, and we'll see you guys in the next video!